Hola, mi nombre es Washington Ibáñez y en el día de hoy nos trasladamos a Dinamarca para hablar con uno de los integrantes de una banda de una gran proyección internacional como lo es IOTune. Hoy en entrevistas Metal Index tenemos a su baterista y fundador, Björn Andersen. Welcome, my friend. Finally, Thank you finally so much for after having me. some delays and personal issues, we are here in Metal Index. Are you Ben? Yeah. I've been very good. I mean, like uh, we had a couple of shows in Denmark in December. Um, actually, our first headlining shows. That was very, very nice. Uh, one in Copenhagen and one in a uh, smaller town, Odense. And uh, that was very nice to try that. We never tried to be a headlining band before. So that was very nice. Great experience. And then, of course, all Christmas and New Year's and stuff like that. And then right now, it's, uh, it's easy going, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so happy to take this happen with you personally. Your pen is a big projection into the metal scene. But we want to know first how do you meet each other and then how you guys created IOTUNE. Yeah, that's a long story. I mean, it goes way back, all the way back to 2009, actually. I think I reached out to like an, a post on the internet some guys looking for a drummer like it was described as 70s rock maybe acid rock something like that and uh, and that was actually Jesper and our old singer Benjamin who was looking for for bandmates uh, so we hooked up and we started jamming and we made all kinds of different music I wouldn't say we we're that good at that time <laughs> it was very much like searching for searching for what, what it should be and also like becoming better musicians and uh, there was a lot of things going on for a long time. And uh, that slowly developed into a more hard rocking sound, I would say. And at one point, Jesper's older brother, who always has been an amazing guitar player, joined on bass. So he had this big six string bass and he played He played bass in the band, but in a very, I would call virtuoso kind of style, like and tuned like a big guitar actually, because he was a guitar player for real. Um, but things developed, and Jens Nikolai went from the bass to play guitar, and then slowly mm. more and more metal crept into it. Um, so, in a way, we we started we started in a whole other ball game actually, but but. We were all metal fans. I played some metal before, and yes, Ben Yasegul, I played metal before also. So it was like kind of, it was in our DNA. So it just kind of developed into that. And then I would say around 2013, we decided to be like a metal band, or we decided to not have any boundaries, mm. so to speak. Like anything can be as hard as it wants to be. We can have the most hard music. It can be a part of the band sound. So we did that. Uh, and then it just turned into metal. And oh. then it turned into metal that's like, I don't know, inspired by by all the things we like about metal. So it became like a melting pot <laughs> in, in a way. Yeah. yeah. And and the sounds we developed in uh, 2013 actually was the start of some of the demos and stuff that went on to become the first EP we did, uh, The Wizard Falls, yeah. So that was like the start of our our metal sound and the way we started briefly, because it's a long history. I've known Jesper and Sigulai for, yeah, since 2009, <laughs> yeah. The first reaction when I listened to IOTune uh, was amazing. Uh, what I said, uh, first of all, Thank you. Uh, the band has a lot of influences of many metal bands. And second, but John's voice reminds me to Arturus. I don't know if you listen to Arturus. Arturus is a Divo Borgir's old bass guitar. Yeah. The voice. I know them very well. Yeah, actually, um, yeah. Uh, I don't think that's, that's not so conscious. I think we hear a lot of different like uh, <laughs> like the different projections of uh, John's voice. I mean, um, Some people think he sounds like, like 
actually, we, we hear a lot of different uh, names, but I can definitely see the similarity to Arcturus. And we are also very uh, big fans of Arcturus, all of us. Um, Yes, Ben, yes, Nikolai were really big fans of them for a long time, and I got, actually got to know Arcturus through them. And I, I, it is one of my favorite bands now, I would say. Uh, I really got into them, actually, with the last record, uh, the Arcturian sign. Yeah. Really, really uh, great record. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's a huge yeah. difference between John's voice and Benjamin's voice, uh, for sure. And what you yeah. said, uh, um, it's a different projection of the band. It is. It is. But uh, I mean, like, I think we are very lucky to have had two singers, uh, which which both have so distinct voices. I mean, they're very recognizable and and very very good in their own way. So yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I think it's 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 very very difficult. I don't know why, but it's the most difficult thing for a band. It is to find a great singer. It's it's just mm -hmm. the way it is. Yeah, there are people who who have great oh. voices and can sing sing clean, but. But someone with personality, that's very different and, and very very difficult, I think. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you, got a dip, you got a different personality with, with John's voice. Uh, para todos aquellos que están viendo este video por primera vez, no se olviden de suscribirse a nuestro canal de YouTube. También estamos en Instagram, Facebook y Twitter. Si me quieres seguir como arroba Metal Index. Y también si prefieres escucharnos en plataformas de audio, puedes hacerlo otra vez de Google Podcast, Player Fan, Podbine. And for support Spotify. Uh, Bjorn, what is the main influence of the band? That is so hard. That is so hard to put in like a main influence. But I would say, I think maybe more than people realize, I think we like, a lot of us like the classics actually. I mean, like we love Iron Maiden, we love Judas Priest, we love Metallica. Uh, but we also love like Arcturus, we love. I love mm. the Norwegian scene, uh, a band like Borgnaga, which is also like Seaman, uh, also sings in Borgnaga, amazing band. Um, I'm a huge band of, uh, yes, of Enslaved, like my shirt, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it tells here. Um, so I think it's it's so hard to say what we are, what we are like really, because it's so broadened also. And myself, I'm like hugely, I, I'm a huge fan of Pink Floyd. I mean, like the soundscapes mm. of Pink Floyd. I'm a huge, huge fan of that. And that's not even metal. So for me, there's also a kind of cinematic aspect to the band that that I think is very important. That's definitely a thing I want to, to put into the sound, uh, mm. like sound effects and stuff like that. If you, if way, you have in to a way pick, it's possible. If you have to pick three drummers, what would they be? Okay, three drummers. I would say this is so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think I would I would say I would say Mickey D. I would also say uh, Thomas Hoke from Meshuga. Oh yeah, sure. And then I would say Tony Williams, the great jazz drummer. Yeah, that would be oh. my picks. When, yeah. when, when you when you started this adventure with uh, the first EP called The Wizard Falls, released on 2016, uh, that was with another vocalist, uh, Benjamin. After all these lineup changes, what is the best thing to consider of making the first album, taking elements from the first EP? Mm, I think. I think the first EP, I'm proud of it. I, I, I like it a lot. I think it's great songs. I think what we really took away from that process was that we kind of found like the method to write songs. What I could wish for the first EP was that the production was better, honestly speaking. Um, so for me, it was like, that EP was, was like, was like the part where we kind of cemented our sound. We got like a really great method of making songs, writing riffs, writing drums, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Ben, yes, Nikolai working on guitars and, and then me working on the drums in a kind of, um, in a kind of world strum <laughs> vortex that, that kind of just works. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I would say. So it was the start. Tell, tell me something uh, about the theme of this album, the, the, the new album, the, your first album, and the title and the cover. Uh, the name is Access or Words. For me, this is, ki this is kind of gate to see other realms, another dimension, in the whole universe. Yeah. Es explain yourself all of this creation, and this creation was made by Elin Alcanto. Mr. Eric Encanto. Yeah. What do you think about all of this? I think I think he did an excellent job on the cover, f uh, first and foremost. He got like, a, actually the idea for the cover was uh, was made by Jens Nikolai, so he oh. wrote it down uh, and sent it to Elian, and uh, they kind of worked it out together. And he made a fantastic job out of that. I think it's uh, it's a really great cover. I like that. And yeah, it's Access All Worlds. It is. It's not supposed to be taken so literal, maybe. But you. But I mean, we like to be. We like to have like uh, things and layers where you can interpret stuff <laughs> down below. <laughs> so Access All Worlds is not just a spacefaring bunch of uh, people. It is also maybe you can access all worlds within yourself or. Mm -hmm. in many kinds of ways in your life yeah. so it's supposed to be like interpreted more broad and fi philosophical maybe yeah and, and i always say to my people and my friends uh, do you think we are the only ones in the whole universe um, i don't think so i mean and um, people think we are just god's creation on the universe creation uh, i don't think so no to me i mean um, I don't know, but I sure hope there's other life out there. And for me, this thought of us just being the only thing, the only life form in the whole universe is kind of depressing, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope so. And I think so also, yeah. Yeah, and, and there is something interesting about this album as well. Um, it was recorded and mixed by Fredrik Nostrom, one of the greatest Swedish producers ever. And the yeah. first time when I listened to this album, I said, and man, this is something about Goddard sound, the Sweden sound. Was Fredrik yeah. involved on this rhythm process? No, not at all. No, no. Okay. Uh, I, can, I mean, like we actually produced the album, so to speak, ourselves, but he mixed and mastered it. So in a way, we, we recorded it ourselves and uh, we took all the tracks to Sweden and he mixed the tracks and did a really great job I think of mixing the tracks uh, we kind of um, we made like a sort of I don't know what you would call this like a kind of a script like for the sound and we sent to him and uh, mm -hmm. he it was actually up to him to interpret that but he did a very good job I think uh, we were looking for his kind yeah. of industrial sounding kind of record you know yeah mm. uh, this album Access All Wars brought to you to sign with Metal Blade Records yeah, yeah. How has been That's huge how has been the experience to work with this big label up there? It's a very it's a very uh, good experience because uh, when you sign a record contract, you don't really know what it will do for your band. But um, of course, I mean the way things are today, you you don't make so many money selling albums anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't. That's that's just the way it is. But um, but I would say that a thing like signing with Metal Blade, it made for us actually get out to a much wider audience, um, definitely. I think um, we are a small band, but, uh, but I mean, there's a lot of people all around the world suddenly who have heard our album. Uh, so we, we kind of went worldwide, but, <laughs> but in the underground, I would say. So, uh, so and, and, and that's, that's a big part is actually Metal Blade's uh, doing, I would say. That's uh, that's their honor, yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure, and, and, and right now I'm, I'm, I'm watching on YouTube that you have a few videos. Uh, one is Boye of the Gardening One, and the other one is the Tower of Cosmic Nihility. Uh, but yeah. there's something interesting about it because you work with different directors. Uh, one is yeah, that's true. Rocks, and the other one is Twilight yeah. Media. Uh, why did you take different studios instead of one? 
Mm, I think uh, it's <laughs> that's a different that's a difficult question. I, I mean, like we just uh, scoured the internet for things that that we think was interesting and. And, 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 and beautiful to look at. And then, uh, then we asked to ourselves, well, maybe we can get them to work with us. And, uh, and Voice Visuals was uh, one of these guys. He made like a music video for a very cool band called Shilma Gogna. Mm. Um, I c people should definitely check them out. Um, and we kind of fell in love with his style. He got all these kind of fractal kind of patterns and stuff he can, he mm. can do in his computer. And uh, so that was our first go-to guy, um, and then, then we wanted to do another thing for Tower. We wanted to do a video, uh, yeah, a kind of a video video where we were in it also, but but a little bit mm. mysterious, obscured. Um, also because actually Tower was the last video we did. We also did a video to uh, the Weaver system, which is. Uh, which is a cartoon directed by uh, Kostin uh, Kiaranu, uh, who is a, a mm. very big uh, cartoon artist uh, and, and video artist, and also cover artist for a lot of bands. Uh, we really like his style, but because we did two animation videos, we wanted to do like a video with us in, in it also. Uh, so that was uh, that was actually the the reasoning behind the tower video, and we found like a, a local guy who were really good at also animation and stuff and blending stuff together so it was all just recorded on a white screen and <laughs> and he put us out in space yeah yeah, yeah. no and we are we are sure that i'm, I'm pretty sure they are uh, amazing videos all, all, all of video from io2 are amazing uh Bjorn, what is the future of the band right now about tours and other music videos yeah We've been so uh, touring, we've been so unlucky that we've actually had a couple of tours uh, lined up and then we had offers for tours we said no to because we had other tours lined up and then those other tours got moved or they got cancelled, partly due to uh, mm. the COVID situation, but mm. uh, also just uh, from sheer unluck. Um, so right now, we might have something planned touring wise in the start of 24 but i can't really go into specifics mm. about that but i'm really hoping for that one uh, and i have great faith in that one in 23 we don't have like a real tour planned we have some festival shows mm. right now we are doing a show at summer breeze in germany uh, really looking forward to that one that's a big festival and uh, really really huge opportunity for a band like us to play a mm. festival like that and also our local festival in Copenhagen Copenhill great great festival and then we have a festival in Norway Karmoy Getan which we're also looking forward to and then there are some not uh, done negotiated deals uh, also so mm. so there's more to come for sure but I think this first half of uh, 23 um, we are we're delving uh, deep into the second album. Um, right now we are preparing our last strokes on uh, what is to be the first single for the second album. And hopefully we will be done mixing and mastering that single pretty soon. And we also have plans for video for that one. Um, but I can't say when it will be released. It's up to the label, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe not so far off in the future actually, yeah. But I think the whole the whole second album, yeah, that's a different that's different that's 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 farther out. It will not be 23. It will be 24 at the at the soonest, I think. <laughs> but those things, you know, they are so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would like to see you guys here in US in 2024. We would really cross, love to go to US. My fingers. We would love to go to US. I'm crossing my fingers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we would love that. That's a, I mean, that's a boy's dream <laughs> to go for a European yeah. band. If you go to US <laughs> touring, that's like, oh, then you made it. <laughs> yeah. So, so that yeah, is really a dream to come to the US. And yeah. And also, I mean, we uh, we have, I think, we have quite a lot of uh, listeners in the US actually, um, because uh, <laughs> uh, when I've been sending out uh, 
uh, CDs and uh, LPs and merchandise from our Bandcamp store. A lot of those addresses are for actually to uh, people in the US. So, yeah, we would love to go there. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of people. Uh, it's a lot of people listening to to IO2 right now, and it's amazing. It's amazing, though. Uh, Bjorn, thank, thank you, you so man. much. I enjoy talking to you today. I think IO2 is uh, uh, amazing band. Uh, you are amazing musician, and hopefully, you will get all that you, you want in the near future. Uh, take this occasion thank you, man. to send you greetings. Uh, take this occasion to send some greetings to our followers in Metal Index. Yeah, man. I just want to say uh, greetings to Metal Index and uh, all, uh, all the people out there, man. Um, I, think, uh, I think you guys at Metal Index are doing a wonderful job and uh, I'm glad to be with you guys. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Yeah, man. Uh, no se olvide de visitar nuestro canal en YouTube, Metal Index, y suscribirse. También estamos en Instagram, Facebook y Twitter, pero si prefieres escucharnos, también lo puedes hacer a través de Spotify, Google Podcast, Podbean y Player FM. Esto fue todo por hoy. Gracias por acompañarnos. Será hasta una nueva próxima oportunidad. See you there.